Hello, welcome to Bouldersaurus. Despite having to take a week off to deal with the neck and back injury, I'm back to climbing. Although I'm climbing a few grades below my limit, this latest set had some cool climbs that I'd like to show off. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. The first climb is a white V3, and I wanted to show this climb because of how long it is. Some climbs go straight up the wall, but others, like this one, meander quite a bit before finishing. You'll also notice a lot of gray trapezoidal holds on the wall. These are called volumes and are a part of every climb. You'll see me using one of them as a foothold at the end of this video. In contrast to the last video, the climbs in this video will primarily be overhanging. Overhanging climbing requires a lot more power and core strength to keep your feet on the wall. My strength in climbing are walls 20 degrees or less, so a lot of the climbs in this video are part of my weak area of climbing. On top of dealing with an injury, the climbing in this video probably won't be my best, so you've been warned. Excuses aside, here's the next climb. This yellow V4 features crimps, which are small edges about the width of your fingertip. Climbs that have a lot of holds of the same type like this one become difficult towards the end as you have to repeatedly use the same muscles throughout. The crux of this climb is right here. One of the crimps is positioned sideways, referred to as a side pull, and you have to shift your body weight quite a bit to the right to make it usable. This next green V4 is quite a bit more challenging, but that's probably because overhanging climbs are my weakness. I employ a move referred to as a toe hook here. There's a hold behind the bottom volume, and in order to keep myself on the wall, I have to hook my toe around it. I should have kept it there. As you can see, the moment I move it away, I swing out from the wall. While this looks impressive, it is actually bad technique and wastes valuable energy. My other favorite part is having to get both hands on the large sideways hold. I use a move called a back flag here to get my hips beneath the hold to make it easier to grab. Just like the white V3, I use the volumes at the ends as a foothold in order to make the reach up to the last finishing hold. While this next climb is graded to V5, I found it a bit easier than the previous V4, probably because it's only on a 30 degree wall which plays closer to my strengths. There's a lot of hip flexibility required in this climb, as the footholds are often positioned to the side of where your core is. The crux of the climb is right here, standing up into two upside down holds called underclings. After that though, the last moves are a piece of cake, and I don't even need to use the last hold thanks to some good footwork on my end. Similar to the last climb, I found this white V6 to be rather easy as well. The crux is the first move, where you have to cross into a pretty bad right hand hold. After that, spending some time getting your hands and feet adjusted makes the next move easier. I mess up a bit here and get my feet a bit too high, but I work well in scrunched up positions so it didn't pose much of a problem. I messed up again here and didn't notice a foothold outright and, once again, got myself in a scrunchy position when moving out to the penultimate hold. This proved to be a bit more troublesome, but I was able to move through it and do the last few easy moves to the top of the wall. This black V6 felt more challenging, mainly due to having a high up crux. With my neck and back injury, I have to avoid falling as the impact is really quite painful, so it makes high up cruxes extra scary. After working up some crimps, the crux starts with getting a heel hook out left. The left handhold isn't the best and you really have to pull hard on it to get the right hand up to the last hold. After that, the final pull to the top of the wall isn't easy either, but I was able to literally pull through. This orange V7 was my favorite climb of the set, as it played so well to my strengths. The big block holds have small little chips screwed into them to make them easier to hold. The crux of this climb is having to press into this second block before making a dynamic move around the corner. This is where my strengths come into play. As mentioned before, I work well in scrunched up positions, and the entire second half of this climb is a lot of scrunching up. A lot of people struggled at this part, but for me, it's exactly the sort of thing I love. I will probably climb this climb every time I'm at the gym. Our last climb today is a blue V7. There are two V8s on this set that I'm capable of doing, but both of them have high up crux moves, and given the trouble I've been having with my injury, I decided it's best to save them for a future video. That being said, this blue V7 seemed easy at first, but the end gave me quite a bit of trouble, as the hardest moves are at the top. On this attempt, I spent too long trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and ran out of energy. The footholds on this climb are big, but the handholds aren't the best. It's a mix of crimps, which I'm good at, 
and pinches, which I struggle with. The starting sequence is easy enough for me, but this move up to this large pinch is the first part I struggle with. I don't actually pinch this hold, but crimp my fingers on the top. From here I have to shift my weight to the left and make a committing move to the crimp on the volume. But it's not done, as the move to the top of the wall is a big one. I mustered up the courage and was able to send it. That's all for now. Hopefully I'll be climbing better in the next video and can show off some harder climbs. Goodbye and have a good life.